Honey, what is this charge in the bank hey. account? Uh, what charge? It is from Ajuna Astro. Have you ever had something on back order so long that you forgot you purchased it? That is what happened with this. This is the 0.7 reducer for my 11 inch Edge HD. And it's been on back order for almost a year. Every, every bit of 10 months. I forgot I bought it. So, it came as a surprise when we got charged for it. But apparently they're pretty hard to come by these days. We've got clear skies tonight. We are going to test it out. I did some imaging last night at uh, F10, you know, the full 2800 millimeter focal length on the, on the telescope. And I am going to put this thing on it, make sure we got the right one here. 0 0.7 reducer lens, Edge HD 1100. This will give us a 1960 millimeter focal length at F7. Should be pretty cool. Now I've heard people complaining about the field flatness with these. So that will be the first thing we will look at. How corrected these are. That's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna go slap it on there and I will get back to you with some results. Okay, out in the observatory, I've been shooting data for uh, our reducer test. You can see we've got it installed here, um, but I'm having a problem. And the problem is that my stars are trailing. Now, it's, it's on every length of exposure imaginable, from 2 seconds to 10 minutes. They've got the same little trail to them. And uh, that tells me there's some kind of flexure or something loose. It's not, and it's like a diagonal trail. The, the camera is north up, so and the stars are trailing diagonally. So, you know, it's not specifically in the right ascension or the declination. Um, there's, there's something loose. So I'm just going around kind of wiggling things, you know, trying to look for any kind of obvious... You know, I've heard these these dovetails are not very sturdy, so that might be where the flexure is. I've imaged with this mount before at like 2300 millimeters with no problem. So there's something going on. So right now I'm, I'm hunting that down. Um, if I can't figure it out, I'll just, you know, fix it up, fix it in post and show you guys what the reducer at least can do. Uh, so far I've been really impressed by the reducer. Um, this, these clouds should blow over tonight, and we will get our sulfur. Sulfur is what we got to do tonight. Okay, my uh, five-year-old daughter just drew this picture of... You don't need to pick your nose, honey. This is me looking through my telescope. Is my head really that big? Okay. But let's uh, talk about what's going on with this reducer here. The, uh, the star trailing issue has not been solved. Uh, I've done a lot of tests. I thought maybe it was pinched optics. I thought maybe uh, it was polar alignment, flexure. You know, all, all, I, I've gone through the, the laundry list of, you know, potential issues that would be causing this 
You can, I'll show it to you here. All my stars are just slightly trailed diagonally like this. And I did some unguided exposures. I did a one minute unguided exposure and it did not have that trailing. So I'm fairly certain, like I was worried the, redu the reducer was faulty, like there was something wrong with it. Um, because the the uh, the trailing was showing up in a, you know, even short, like 20 second exposures. Uh, but when I turned off the guiding, the trailing stopped. So the way the guiding, the way that the guider is, you know, bumping the mount around is causing that, you know, that, vib that vibration, that wobbling. Uh, you know, this is the right ascension, left to right di direction and declination is up and down because my camera is north up. So this is like a diagonal, just a wobbling. Um, I My scope was very evenly balanced. Uh, what I did, I just went out and uh, dropped it back, made it a little south heavy, a little tail heavy. Maybe that will help stabilize it and keep, uh, keep the guide pulses from knocking it around. I don't know. Uh, but I got to figure out something. I, you know, I might need a sturdier dovetail. It might be the dovetail that's just the weak link there. Uh, but the fact that I was able to get good exposures without guiding tells me that it wasn't the reducer. The reducer is A-OK -okay and it is producing some great results. On the left here, you see the exposures at F10. This is the full 2800 millimeter focal length um, with the hydrogen alpha filter. And that's the field of view you get at F10 with the Edge HD 11 inch. And then with the reducer on, this is the, uh, the field of view you get. Much, uh, much nicer. And you're so, when you start imaging at these focal lengths, like you're up near 3000 millimeter focal lengths, um, you are, you're limited by the atmosphere. You are sampling well above the detail that the atmosphere will even allow to pass through it. So there's literally no benefit to imaging at F10 as opposed to uh, F7. Um, if you can get a hold of this reducer, there's no reason to take it off for, for deep sky imaging. Uh, you can, I mean, this was only two hours at F10 and this was like six at F7. So of course the noise levels better, but I mean, you can see there, there's no more detail at F10 than there is at F7. I mean, the detail is just as good at F7. So there's just, I mean, the reducer is a, a must have to image with this scope um, at a longer focal length. There's no, there's no point in re imaging at F10 with this thing. Um, so I got, I did hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen and at first I made an HOO it looks nice and I uh, you know worked on the stars quite a bit of course to uh, shape them up so they're not so bad uh, but yeah that looks good and then I went and made an SHO with it and I, I think that's lovely so the uh, the reducer is a definite win, and I, I think I think it's a must-have for for the Edge HD scopes for deep sky imaging. Um, I measured the field flatness, and it was the same, about the same as it was with or without the reducer. Um, I didn't I didn't dig too deep in there, but there there wasn't anything worth noting i mean the stars look the same all the way across the field <laughs> what are you what are you doing oh you've got a, a green golf tee she's playing with the green screen uh okay but yeah the reducer is great i just need to go and hunt down this little tracking gremlin um but other than that yeah the uh it I plate solved the, these images and you it's giving me you know 1962 millimeter focal length so that you've got the uh, the advertised focal length and uh, field of view and uh, 
The uh, it, it was definitely twice as fast. I'm touching the background. Uh, because you know I, I did I did two tests on this guy, with and without the reducer and the exposure. The same length exposure produced you know twice the signal. So so yeah, the the reducer is awesome. Get it if you can. And if you can't, get in line for one, because it will really make your Edge HD more a more capable instrument. Until next time, clear skies. You know what? I'm going to shoot one more clip once I solve this tracking issue, just <laughs> for for my own peace of mind.